Houston 33, Memphis 32. Uh, this was this was nuts. Houston was down 26 to 7 in the fourth quarter. So yet they they won yardage 463 to 438. They won drive points 20 to 10. Memphis won yards per play 5.8 to 5.1. Um, they won third downs 53 to 38 percent. They won rushing 156 to 97. The turnovers were equal. Uh, Houston had a fourth down failure and missed a 21 yard field goal. This now of course Houston did get that kick return late. Uh, so that's that's something. Drive points is uh, a bit misleading because Memphis had two drives that were just short of 60 yards, 59 and 57. Um, both teams were able to drive the ball pretty much all night. And here, let me go and pull it up. I'll show you exactly what we're looking at as far as win probability because this was nuts. You don't normally see something like that where one team is so decidedly expected to win a game, and then it just flips on a dime at the very end. You don't see that happen. Uh, you can see under the expected points there where it just, I mean, it, it was bottom of the barrel on play like 74, and then by play 101, it has completely flipped. It is absolutely insane. Um, I, I just... So I watched this, and I looked at the Houston onside kick recovery that led to the final touchdown that actually won them the game. And I am of the opinion that they were offside on that onside kick. Now, didn't do a whole lot of going back and looking and all that kind of stuff, right? But I think it. I think they should have. This was... <laughs> Wet blanket jumps in. Only FBS teams to win each game by double digits this season. Ohio State, Oklahoma State. Yeah, you can call that Oklahoma State win by double digits if you want to. I understand. But they, they scored a touchdown to go up by 10 with like less than three minutes left in the game. I mean, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, but Memphis absolutely just gave this game away. They they had control of it 26-7 to in the fourth quarter. And to lose 33-32 to is... Just brutal. Like, we've talked about Ryan Silverfield on here in the past. Memphis has problems. It's not players. This is a coaching situation. They kicked two field goals in the fourth quarter and still got beat. How do you allow this to happen? And forget whether or not Houston was offsides on the onside kick. Forget that. If you're Memphis, you got to start figuring out, like, what what is the problem? With this football program, how do they continuously lose games that they should win? Just a, just based on a talent perspective, first off. But this is becoming a trend. This is becoming a problem. And Memphis's schedule, like it's not like it's going to get a whole lot easier. I mean, they they opened up. I think they've got East Carolina next week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they've already played Navy. They've already played uh, some of the weaker teams. And now you're going to have to kind of go through a little bit of a gauntlet against teams that are fairly similar. Uh, 82 Atlantic jumps in. Do you think Ryan Silverfield gets canned at the end of the season if they don't win at least seven games? I think even if it's just seven, you could really have the conversation because you do not need the football program to get left behind. That's the biggest issue. If you are trying to move along, if you are trying to get to a bigger conference, etc., You've got all these plans to like update the Liberty Bowl. You're you're trying to sell season tickets. You're trying to get people fired up about this football program and about this athletic program. You can't keep the same average mess in your football program. Like I know it's not possible to hit on every single hire. They hit on Fuente. They hit on Mike Norvell. But I uh, I don't know about Silverfield yet. Like, he he's the best recruiter that they've had thus far. But we keep getting the same situations like this. So, interesting to watch that going forward. So, pay attention to Memphis. See what they end up doing for the rest of the year. Because uh, they were 4-1 and one and looked pretty good. Now you're sitting at 4-2. and two. Things could crater quickly if you're not careful. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.